Okay, everyone, we're back here talking about the nervous system, lecture three. Now, I hate to consider this a lecture, by the way, but we're going to talk cranial nerves, and it's very exciting. They're different than the spinal nerves, which we talked about in lecture two, but spinal nerves are both sensory and motor. And with cranial nerves, again, coming out the bottom base of the skull, underneath the um, bottom part of the brain, we have these cranial nerves, and, and there's a fun way to remember them, but, re but they are not mixed. Some of them are, but the um, biggest difference between spinal nerves and cranial nerves is that cranial nerves are more specialized. And so let's look at them. We have 12 pairs of cranial nerves, so one for either side. And the easiest way to remember this, now you might want to write this down, on old Olympuses, towering tops, a Finn and German, right over here, view some hops. Mm -hmm. So here's what you picture everyone. You got a nice mountain and uh, maybe there's two peaks to this mountain because we've got two guys sitting on top of the mountain. We've got a Finnish guy from Finland, right? And uh, his pal, his German pal, sitting right here, and uh, they're just looking out over their uh, hops field, and, and uh, they're likely with brew in hand, and uh, they're drinking a cold one because they're, they're growing hops so they can make their own beer, right? So on um, old Olympus, because this is Mount Olympus, think mythology, <laughs> where Zeus lived, Olympus. On old Olympus's towering tops, a Finn and German, View some hops. Right. Some modification you'll see here in a minute, but let's talk about uh, the or We start with, uh, um, oh, and here's one more thing. Um, when cranial nerves are numbered, they're, they're numbered by Roman numeral. So we have uh, a little test of, of remembering our Roman numerals, but uh, B I I, and then B I I I. X and X and XI and then XII. All right, so 12 pairs of cranial nerves, but they're numbered by way of Roman numerals. Isn't that fun? All right, so let's look at each of these top three, and um, they're named for, oh, well, I would say where they go, what they do for a living for the most part. Now, the first one's olfactory, and your olfactory sense is your nose. So this is your sense of smell. And we're going to go over this better in a minute. All right. Our sec second cranial nerve is the optic nerve. There's a T. And optic is eyes or eyesight, right? Oculomotor is cranial nerve three. And oculo is eye and it's eye movement. Okay. Towering tops. All right. So this is where it gets a little strange. Again, we're going to do another eye movement. Um, called the trochlear nerve. Now, if you if you know what a trochlea is, um, it's a pulley. And um, this particular cranial nerve uh, innervates a, a specific muscle that has a pulley-like function on the eye. I don't know. That's how it was named. Um, the fifth is trigeminal. And easily way to look at that, three sides and twins, right? Gemini. If you're a Gemini, you know what I mean? Trigeminal nerve is a sensory nerve to the face uh, that is, has three sensory sections, and uh, that's where it gets its name. All right, so um, here's where we get a little strains. All right, now we're going to do abducens. Mm, interesting, right? Trigeminal six is abducens. I've got to make sure I spell that right. Let's do facial. Let's do auditory. Now, um, let me make sure I did that right here. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Okay. So I wanted to make sure. I don't know what abducens means. Sorry, I just recall I didn't tell you that. Facial obviously goes to the face. Auditory is also known as um, acoustic or vestibulococcular. Uh, that has to do with your vestibular sense, so I'm going to put it in parentheses here. You're probably not going to be able to see it, but vestibulococcular. Um, 
And again, your vestibular sits, and then you have this snail-shaped structure called the cochlea. So this, this is an important, but for our memorization, I hate the word, but for our way of remembering uh, the auditory nerve, um, cranial nerve 8. All right, let's move on top over here, 9, glosso, which is tongue, pharyngeal. That's another hard one to spell. Pharynx. Y N X. Pharyngeal. Goes to your tongue and your pharynx. Interesting, huh? Oh, my favorite, the vagus. Only cranial nerve that we're not going to talk about going to the actual head. The vagus, uh, if you think about a vagabond, you can think Las Vegas, but it's spelled differently, but a vagabond is a wandering. And this nerve, cranial nerve 10, dives down into the abdomen and is responsible for uh, some abdominal function. So uh, spinal, this is also known as the accessory nerve. It's actually not really even going to the head. See, I lied. I didn't mean to. But the accessory nerve is going to innervate some neck muscles. So it's kind of the head, but not really. It's actually the spinal nerve or the accessory nerve. And then the other one is, uh, last but not least, cranial nerve 12, hypoglossal. And that hypogloss, there's that gloss word, goes to the tongue. Hypo means under. So when you look at your 12 pairs of cranial nerves, let's talk about it from a massage therapy perspective. We can't really touch these nerves where they come out, but we can affect, let's talk about specific ones. Um, I'm going to go green here for you. Probably the, the one I have seen the most in my career is facial nerve issues. And the facial nerve is, is a nerve that's located um, in this, what's considered an endangerment site, and it's responsible for innervating the face naturally. Um, but this is a nerve that can be affected by Bell's palsy. You get a paralysis that often resembles a stroke or a cerebral vascular accident. And what you'll find is that people can't close their eye and their face will droop. So most people will think that they're having a stroke, but you actually get facial nerve paralysis from more common in, in I would say, middle-aged um, some people will get it. There's some, some suspecting uh, excessive stress, pregnancy. Uh, you see women that'll get it um, uh, co more commonly if they have, and it doesn't have to just be women, but um, if they have a lot of stress and uh, maybe get cold sores. That's one. They're suspecting a little virus activity here. So Bell's palsy is tough. I mean, uh, if somebody gets it in their younger, maybe under the age of 30, you really worry about the, the body's ability to, to handle homeostasis. Um, there is some belief that we can help with stress. Uh, there's a little argument over whether or not we're decreasing um, cortisol, which is a stress, a long-term stress hormone. But I will say we are definitely lowering heart rate, blood pressure, and we are putting someone in a parasympathetic state. So you bet. Massage for Bell's palsy, absolutely. You have really no concerns about touching the area. You never really want to poke in here anyway. But anything you can do to help somebody with facial paralysis are also known as Bell's palsy. Now, uh, besides Bell's palsy, I will say, the vagus nerve is asked a lot about. In fact, some people will say as it runs in where you're car near your carotid, if you press in there, you can likely cause somebody's stomach to grumble, which, um, of course, you don't want to press in there and maybe accidentally or superficially work a little too deep. So vagus nerve is just located superficially here where your um, external carotid is here. So you, you just want to be a little careful of of, uh, and it, from endangerment site perspective. Um, and uh, these are your 12 pairs of cranial nerves. Let's see, I got one thing left for you. All right, now to know what they do, I'm gonna give you another fun mnemonic device. Again, stuff you make up in college or you hear about. Um, the one that I remember best, besides this uh, old Olympus's towering tops, some say, marry money. But my brother says big boobs matter most. I know. I know. Uh, S stands for sensory. So that means it only, any S here, so we've got um, olfactory, optic, 
auditory, only sensory. Sensory here. And the M is for motor, so it only does movement, and oculomotor gives it away. Trochlear, I was telling you, does movement. B stands for both. Uh, it's an easy way to say it's both sensory and motor. Trigeminal does uh, the sensory portion I was telling you about, but it also innervates a couple of muscles. Um, motor, both here in the facial nerve and the glossopharyngeal vagus. So some say marry money, but my brother said big boobs matter most. Um, I don't have a brother who told me that, but uh, I will say it sticks. I've remembered it on old Olympus's towering tops of Finn and German, view some hops. Some say marry money, but my brother says big boobs matter most, and I will say the cranial nerves. For the most part, pretty trouble-free. We will get tick neuralgia. We will get some trigeminal nerve issues. We will get facial nerve problems. We can get eye movement issues. Um, I'll tell you when I've dealt with it in my previous career as an athletic trainer, when somebody would have a concussion, we actually will assess these cranial nerves. And uh, it's relatively simple to do, especially if you know what they do. If you have any question whether or not somebody has any deficiencies in these nerves, it will tell you that there's some sort of um, compromise on that nerve, but uh, for the massage therapy world, I will say uh, even national exams like to ask about the facial and the vagus nerves more specifically, um, and uh, maybe a trigeminal nerve question here and there. Knowing what number they are, just as easy as remembering on old Olympus is starting top of Finn and German, do some hops. Okay, cranial nerves. Love ya.